Hey guys, my name is Ethan, this is Carbro, and welcome to the series where I teach you how to build a Twitch bot in Python for your Twitch channel. I got that out clearly this time. Woo. Uh, today we are going to be uh, dealing with database stuff and how to store and save stuff to the database. Um, so, I guess the first thing we need to do is actually create a module to manage the database. So we can do that in lib, again, if we just close commands for a second. Create a new file, call it db.py. And then um, uh, if you've seen my discord.py tutorial this code is going to look very familiar um, because it's basically the same thing <laughs> more or less there are a few uh, there are a few modifications that we're going to do and I'll explain them as we go um, we're also going to be using SQL this time to build the database we're not going to be using the database manager so ooh, fancy uh, so we will need to import I am putting that in the wrong file <laughs> uh, from SQL I import connect uh, that's the other one we're going to need. The need a connection object, which will set as connect, and then uh, I don't know why I made that a f string in the thingy. We're just going to set as files slash database dot db. This uh, dot slash isn't necessary, but I've seen a friend. I saw a friend use it, and I kind of prefer it. <laughs> so I'm just going to be using that. You can do that. And that will be perfectly fine. I just use dot slash because I prefer the look of it. And then we're going to set check same thread to false just to make sure it doesn't error because it's not going to matter on something like this. And in cursor, we're going to set as connection dot cursor or cur. Or quote. Uh, so we're going to make a decorator for this now. <laughs> if you don't know what a decorator is, it's essentially something. Well, if you've if you watch the Discord to Pi series, you'll know what they are. Um, There's essentially something that you put. So you have like a function here that does whatever, blah blah blah, blah. and then you have something here that is a decorator. Um, and what this decorator will do is it will essentially run the function with some extra uh, functionality. Uh, we're going to be creating a very simple decorator, so I'm going to just kind of use that as an example and hope it makes sense um, if it doesn't I'm sure there are other videos out there that will explain it better than I could um, but yeah so we've, uh, we're going to create a function called with commit and we're actually going to pass a func object into it now this with commit is what the uh, the decorator is going to look like so it will be with commit or it will most likely be db with commit but uh, so this is actually what's going to happen here, and then def func here. Um, oh. uh, so this func object here is what's actually passed in here. So we use this, this calls this, and it passes this in here, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, hopefully it does. And then we're going to set another function here, it doesn't matter what it's called, we're just going to call it inner. We're going to pass through args and quags just for expendability's sake. Um, and then we're just going to run the function with all its arguments and its keyword arguments and then after that function is run we're going to commit uh, commit doesn't uh, we still need to make commit commit doesn't exist yet um, but yeah and then we return inner so essentially what this is doing here is again we're passing this function in we're running it and then because we have this here we're also committing it so basically uh, so long as we have uh, so any function with this uh, at with commit above it with like above it here will run and then the database will commit itself so it will save um, it will save the database um, hopefully that makes some degree of sense if it doesn't um, Feel free to join the, uh, the Discord server and we'll see if we can explain it better for you. Um, it's probably not something I want to explain in the comments, to be honest. Um, so if you're stuck with that, then try and uh, join the Discord server rather than leave a comment if you can. Um, so we are actually going to create a uh, function with this so far. We're going to create a function called build. Uh, and this build will create the database. Um, and we're going to call script exec, which again we haven't made yet but bear with me um, and we're gonna pass in a file path so we're gonna set files and script.sql which again does not exist yet um, but again bear with me uh, then we have our 
commit function down here, which doesn't take anything, which is just connection.commit. It's just easy to have, it seems we're going to be importing uh, the DB module in and stuff. And then you have con uh, close, connection.close, which basically just closes the connection database. It, it's essentially like closing a Word document in a way. That's somewhat weird analogy, but okay. Um, so now we're going to define our functions to actually get data from the database. Now I have uh, four. I always define four that help me with this sort of thing. Um, so I have field, which takes a command. It just takes a SQL command. And it takes a, um, a series of values. We then execute our command um, and then pass our values through as a tuple. Essentially just having it like this just makes it a little nicer to code with. Um, you'll see what I mean if you're not sure. And then if, oh, fetch, uh, we're going to use, uh, use the uh, Python 3.8 walrus operator to do this because it's just a little nicer. Uh, fetch once, so essentially cursor.fetch1 will be automatically assigned to a variable called fetch. We need to check if it's not none, so if it does, if it does actually exist in the database, um, we return the first value of that. So essentially if we just want a single field, this will return a single field rather than a tuple that we don't have to access. Uh, essentially is what it's doing. Uh, the others are fairly simple, so uh, record uh, just returns a single record. <laughs> Cursor dot executes command and then tuple values, the same thing again. Uh, we just return cursor dot fetch one, which just returns one. I'm gonna move that there. I might move that up as well, maybe. I don't know. Screw it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll just. I've, I've become very particular with spacing recently, and uh, it's sort of annoying, sort of not, because it's kind of good programming practice, but it's a. Uh, it's it's just annoying when you're. Um, a uniformist like I am, a uniformist or a perfectionist like I am, really. Um, so records is basically the same, but we just fetch all, so we're getting now uh, multiple rows from the database rather than just one, like we're doing here. And then another one called column, which is fairly non-standard, but <laughs> it's useful. I'm not sure we're actually going to be using this, but uh, I always just like to have it just in case. Uh, cursor to execute and then command tuple values once again and then we're going to return a list so we're going to be using list comprehension because <laughs> apparently this is the most complicated program in the entire bloody thing um, so we're going to turn the first element of the item for item in cur.fetch all so basically this is sort of doing a field um, for every for a load of rows, so you, uh, what this is doing is just getting a whole column of data. Um, it just makes it easier, all right? And then we're going to have our execute functions down here, so we're going to have three of them. Uh, command and values, and then cur execute command duple values. We don't need a return statement because um, we're not returning anything. Multi exec this is my kind of uh, my multiple execution function I don't think we're gonna need this one at all at any point but I just like to have it in there anyway um, so essentially this is sort of like uh, it's a little more complicated to explain but uh, SQL supports uh, performing multiple things uh, doing multiple things at once um, and this is kind of the support for that. Um, the syntax is a bit weird. Again, I don't know if we're actually going to be using it, so if I'll, ex I'll explain it if we do end up using it. We are going to end up using script exec though, albeit just the once. Uh, and then we're actually going to pass a file name into this. And then with open uh, file name as a read, as a read, uh, as script. Uh, cursor dot execute script script dot read. So basically, what it does is you pass. So if, here for build, uh, we're passing a file name into a script exec. It's opening that file, reading the script, and then executing it. 
pretty much executing all the SQL in that script. Speaking of which, we do actually need our script to run. So we need in files, new file, uh, call it uh, script.sql. If you're running this in idle, um, this won't work. You need to do it. Uh, you can, however, d uh, just do it in a notepad and then save it as an SQL file from there. I think if you you could just do uh, all files and then um, script.sql and that will work just the same. Um, so if you're if you're using idle, you need to do this. If you're using pretty much any other IDE that should support SQL stuff, as you can see uh, down here, Sublime has automatically realized, oh, this is an SQL file. I need to format this like, like SQL. Um, so this is going to be a very simple SQL file because we're only actually building one table at the moment. Um, so we're going to create a table if not exists called users and then we're going to have our semicolon at the end and then we're going to set our user, uh, first thing is user ID. Now um, Twitch saves user IDs as strings so I don't know why um, so we actually need this as text. Um, messages sent we're going to track as well so that could be an integer uh, and that can have a default of zero coins integer default I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time explaining SQL and how it works as such um, I'm just kind of going to explain what each of these functions do and then just kind of move on and s sort of um, pretty much because I don't want to spend a whole huge thing talking about an entirely different language <coughs> even though we are using it it's not the main focus um, the user ID as I said is basically just the user ID we can get that from where is it uh, this ID thing of the user so user ID basically is how we get that uh, messages sent is just a counter pretty much so every time a user send a message that will go up by one uh, coins will be our economy um, so we'll have economy stuff later uh, and coin lock is basically um, so like in discord bots and stuff, I know I keep referencing discord bots but a lot of my viewers are from the discord bot world uh, in discord bots and stuff experience systems generally have rate limiters so you can only gain XP maybe once a minute or something uh, this coin lock is more or less the same thing so you can't just gain coins like by spamming pretty much, it's essentially a spam filter um, and we're setting that as default as the current timestamp just so we have an initialized value and plus this current timestamp isn't going to cause any issues um, so that is our entire script basically that's all we're going to need uh, I think we need to make some more changes in the main file um, so on the on welcome after we've joined the channel we need to, well I suppose you can go anywhere but we need to, well, actually we need to import db don't we, oh, that, that would help um, Oh, sure, I didn't do it in that this file. Oh well, uh, it should be commands and then DB, just like that. That should work fine. Uh, so you have your DB builds. So this will call this, and it'll it'll load the file, and it'll um, it'll load the script file, and then execute the script and everything. And then uh, on public message, we're actually going to have our commit decorator. So basically, after every message has been sent. Um, we're going to commit to the database. It's not too intensive. If, if it does get really bad, you can move this somewhere else. Um, but there's not really a place that you'd want to potentially do it, unless you want to put like a counter in here or something. Uh, so like for every five things, so you can have like a counter variable and then you can have like a modulus function in there if you really wanted to. Um, that's not strictly necessary. We're going to run this now. And uh, oh, it's not SQL, it's SQL like three. <laughs> Whoopsie daisies. Gonna run this, and if we don't get any errors, we're gonna make sure the, oh, the database does actually turn up there, does it? Okay, so we got, haven't got any errors, so I'm gonna presume it's worked. That's not what we want. Files, there we go, that's our database. Um, so if we just launch it, it's the user's thing, and we have user ID, messages sent, coins, and coin lock. So now we have our database, we actually need to start reacting to people and storing data about uh, storing data about people. Uh, so we need to store how many messages, messages they've sent, how many coins they have, that sort of thing. 
Um, and we're going to be doing that in the next episode. Uh, so if you like this video, then say hello down below. If you have any questions, leave them down below as well. Or ideally, join the Discord server in the description, where you'll probably get quicker help and help from multiple people. Uh, plus, the Discord server is pretty cool. Uh, we've got a nice little community in you know, there, um, which is tip top. Um, if you're liking the series so far, then consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you get notifications about upcoming videos in the series. And I'll see you next time where we talk about adding uh, members to a database and doing things with it. Um, really specific there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll see you then.